three, two, one. Here we go! Welcome to the Remote Photography Podcast. In this episode, I speak with Model Sara Scarlett about her remote photography experiences. Enjoy the podcast. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for doing the podcast. Um, if people don't know who you are, can you give us a brief introduction about your career? Yes, of course. Hello, I'm Sarah. I'm um, a Belgium-based uh, model. I, uh, I live in Belgium. I've been modeling for 14 years. That's a long time, uh-huh. of which seven years uh, full-time professionally. I'm working with three agencies in the Netherlands, and I do a lot of uh, commercial hair work with them, mm-hmm. but most of the time I work freelance. I do art modeling, I do commercial modeling, I also have experience with catwalk runway, photo modeling, event organizing, some acting, so uh, yeah, lots of stuff, and of course now also remote shooting. And how did you find that re- about remote shooting? Was it you just saw it on Instagram or was it like on, um, say, Facebook or some photographers that approached you to do it? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think when I saw it for the first time, um, because I'm following uh, lots of other models and I saw that they were doing it and I thought, hmm, this is interesting. Uh-huh. I think I saw it on Facebook for the first time. Hmm. And did you think it was going to be a fad or did you think it was going to be something, oh, maybe I'll see in a couple of months, maybe we'll be able to shoot in person again. Or did you think, oh, maybe I should delve deeper into this? Well, um, I must say at the beginning of uh, lockdown, uh, Mm. the first month, I was really, yeah, I was out of a job. I didn't have anything to do. I had to stay in. Everything was uncertain. And then I started thinking, yeah, there's something needs to happen because I have to do something. I have to make a living. And then uh, remote, remote shooting came along and then I thought, well, let's give this a try. At first, I was not so convinced. At first, at first, I was thinking, oh, what is this? And it's not the real thing. And yeah. how are we going to do this? Because most models were doing it at home. Um, and I also saw that some models were doing it with cell phones. And yeah. I was thinking, no, this is not the real thing. We need uh, professional material. Yeah. And then I contacted a friend of mine who had a studio. Or I think at first I put it on Facebook and I was asking who has a studio and who would be up to uh, yeah. try something out. And then a friend of mine reacted. It was uh, Guido from uh, Studio Momentum in uh, Belgium. And then we we just tried it out in studio and uh, it worked so well. Two years later, we're still doing it. (laughs) And how how did you find it? Did you find, because obviously it's a slower pace, did you find Mm -hmm. it was easier to adapt or did you find, oh, it it took you a couple of remote shoots to get used to it? From the first shoots, I was really into it and I thought, yeah, this is it. This is fun. I like this. Unexpectedly, because at first I I really thought, huh, this is going to work. But when I was doing it, really cool. And And did you like seen so obviously i i, I shot with uh, i'm gonna pronounce his name wrong guido yesterday with, uh, g- good uh, see i can't even say it now so. <laughs> I, I i shot with him yesterday with lilith ah and, okay yeah, right and oh. i know he ha- obviously has a really good studio and he mm-hmm. has he has like um the camera and i think it was an, a mac or something facing towards the model yeah yeah it's a really professional yeah. setup he's got everything you need professional camera lenses yeah. uh yeah the whole studio yeah. he's doing a really really good job with it exactly yeah. yeah did you did you find that was good that you could see yourself straight away you didn't need to wait for the photographer to like you would in person come up to you show you the back mm-hmm. of camera mm-hmm. did you find well, yes that, yeah? yes and no because yeah. it can be distracting when you're looking at the screen and yeah. not looking at the camera and trying to be perfect mm-hmm. on the other hand yeah it's it's really cool and yeah. it's it's good to work faster mm-hmm. When you can see yourself, of course. Yeah. yeah, when you're not working in a studio and when you're just doing everything yourself, it's much more mm. difficult to do. So we are uh, quite spoiled in the studio. Yeah, because you said, you, if I remember rightly, you said you didn't have any a camera that you could do like remote shoots from home. So you no. had to look for a studio. No, and I was thinking, how should I make this investment? Because yeah. I didn't know how long it would take. Mm-hmm. And in retrospect, yes, I think I should have made the investment. But back then, you, I was thinking, no, I'm know, not going yeah. to buy stuff. So I'm going to try to find someone who has everything. Yeah. So obviously, you've done a few remote shoots. Now, how many do you think you've done thus far? I think in between 25 and 30, Uh but um, most of the time, because of course I'm working in the studio, we're doing multiple a day. So I could tell you how many days, but that's not the number of shoots. So I think 
in between 25 and 30. Yeah. Not, I'm not uniquely doing uh, remote shooting, so I'm also yeah. doing live shooting again. And in between lockdowns, I've also still been doing live shoots. So yeah. it's not that remote shooting is my my main thing yeah. to do. Did, did you find now, because obviously things have opened up a bit more since last year, that this beat is crossing over now where obviously you're going to be doing more in-person shoots but do yeah. you, f you find you're still getting like some people who maybe because of travel can't get to shoot with you still want to do a yeah. remote shoot yeah especially people in the us and uk yeah. canada uh, they will keep doing remote shoots i think yeah. i think it's going to stay definitely so out of the remote shoots do what countries have you gone to virtually shall we say let me think lots in the uk the yeah. us uh one or two in canada Mm -hmm. uh, one in Ireland, one in Finland, one in Norway, uh, one in the Netherlands, yeah. one in Belgium. That's funny because <laughs> yeah. I am in Belgium, but yeah. there was something who wanted to try it out. Mm, am I forgetting something? I'm probably forgetting yeah. something. Oh, Israel. Israel. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, no. I don't think anyone said Israel before, so that, mm -hmm. uh, that's a unique one. Do you, yeah. do you find, um, well, you said it before, do you find there's a lot of people, say, in the UK and the US that are still doing remotes because obviously they can't travel as freely? That you're yeah. still you're still getting a lot of clientele from that those areas. Yeah, yeah, and also I can't travel freely. The US yeah. I think has opened or is opening next month. The UK is open, but we have to quarantine when we enter. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so you you didn't have the the setup to start with, and you found a studio that you could work with. Mm -hmm. Did you find that was because did you did you start the first lockdown? Did you start doing it or did you wait till like maybe the second one to like get into doing the studio remotes? Um, I don't really remember exactly, but right. I think it took some months uh, or two or three months yeah. in the first lockdown or after the first lockdown, even when we started. Mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, at first it was unclear if it was what we were doing in studio, if this was even uh, legal to do, because yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we couldn't see anyone. And, and there was lots of confusion about photo shooting, commercial mm -hmm. photo shooting or not, and what you could do. Yeah. So uh, Guido was wearing his mask and keeping his distance. So mm -hmm. in the beginning, it was really a weird way to work. Yeah. As opposed to models who do this at home, who could, of course, use their boyfriend as yeah, an assistant yeah. or do everything themselves. So for us, it was a bit difficult to organize. Yeah. And then if afterwards, of course, everything became more clear and it yeah. was seen as a commercial shoot. So it, we could, we could mm -hmm. work together on this. And it was always with the same person, of course. So it's not that I was seeing lots of different yeah, people. Yeah. It's the same setup, same person. Well, I, I think a lot of people like found the the easiest and safest way to do it because they kept mm -hmm. within the same um, people that they read to say, yeah. like yourself, you, you shot with the same studio and the same people. Yeah. Yeah. So then you, you knew, okay, this is within a contained kind of bubble that we're, yes. we're, trying, we're trying to be creative, but we're, trying, we're doing it safely as well. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. And if something would happen, you could immediately let the people know exactly, like, yeah. that's it positively, yeah. so you should get tested. Yeah. And we've also done some remote shoots on location, not that many, uh -huh. but then we took the studio set up to a location uh -huh. and uh, we've been shooting there. And how did you find that on location? Obviously, it's going to be slightly more, well, I wouldn't say hazardous, but more difficult to... Um, it needs uh, stable Wi-Fi. That's the yeah, only thing yeah. um, that is very important. Yeah. But I was using the same locations that I was using before when I was doing in-person shoots. Uh -huh. <laughs> so so I, I had this list of locations yeah. and I was just picking one. So that was kind of good that you, you, mm -hmm. you where you'd shot in person, you think, oh, maybe I can, if I can get a, a Wi-Fi, you know, I can do remote. Yeah, so it yeah, gives because, people different, a different location. Yes, yes, exactly. And it's the same thing. You just do the remote set, set up, but you can mm -hmm. do it basically anywhere. And when you first started, or obviously now you've done a few, did you find remote shooting could be like limiting because obviously you can't move the camera as much as you would in person? Or did you find those limitations made it a bit more creative that you had to like think shots through and do stuff in camera more? Um, yes, it is more creative yeah. and sometimes it is more challenging and more difficult. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, in studio, I think it's easier yeah. because in, in studio, of course, you can move the camera a bit more with an assistant. He can even handhold the camera if it's yeah. uh, if it's needed. And there is lots of flexibility in studio. So it was challenging, but it was not that challenging. It was easy. Uh, once you get the hang of it, you can do it. And, and also the photographers who book you for remote shoots are used to the system of remote shooting usually. So they know what they want. They know what is possible. 
Have you had any approach you that hadn't done it before or, or most of the people that have approached you had done remote shoots before? Most people had done it before. Maybe one or two didn't. Mm -hmm. But also for them, it was really easy to uh, to do it. Yeah, I think it's one of those things is if you're shown it straight away, you after a couple of shots, you suddenly realize, oh, I understand it and yeah. how to do this. So when um, someone approaches you to do remote shoot, how would you prefer them to present their say ideas to you is it like a mood board or just a discussion through dms or an email um i think that's a, a personal thing but i just always prefer email even for in-person shoots i just like people to send me an email mm -hmm. as much information as they can detailed information some kind of mood board if they have one uh, but i don't really like chats because chat is a bit difficult and also if you have to look the conversation up the yeah, day before the shoot in the chat it's really difficult to find what you're looking exactly, for yeah. so i prefer structured emails but yeah that's a personal thing i mean everyone oh, has a preferences exactly yes. yeah everyone has, has a different way of doing it but like, like say yeah, if you're trying to scroll through a chat to see what the photographer mm -hmm. said yeah so you, you you like to get all the information done in the pre-communication so when it comes to the remote no. shoot everyone knows what they're doing yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. how is the best way that you feel um someone can book a shoot with you is it through your website through the social media oh anyway mm -hmm. um there are many ways to contact me so mm -hmm. um yeah any way works as long as um, it's clear right. uh, when and where and what they want maybe it's uh, good if people would have a look at my website first and maybe read my booking info first I, I've looked at your website and I see you have the, mm -hmm. the, the examples and how how, yeah. um, how how the equipment and stuff is like. So, yeah, that definitely yeah. helps. So have you found the Facebook groups have helped, like, focus when you say you want to do remote shoot? When you post in there, it's because everyone is there for remote shoots that you can, say, fill up a shoot day quicker? Yeah, the Facebook groups are extremely helpful. Yeah. Because then you have all the people that want to book you for remote 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 yeah. remote shoots yeah. in one place, yeah. um, and that's yeah really convenient to just reach all the people that you have to mm -hmm. reach. Because of course there are many people who are not interested in remote shooting, and when you start posting exactly. on your yeah. regular Facebook or Instagram, it gets confusing for them because they're not interested anyway and could yeah. be spammy. So uh, yeah, very helpful. With in-person shoots being more common now because we're in October of 2021, um, do you see remote shoots still being something that you would offer? So maybe, obviously, with, um, say, photographers who can't travel for medical reasons or disabilities, that is something you will still keep going or will you just move back to shooting in person? Um, I think I will keep it to a balance of uh, both. So yeah. focus more on traveling again and uh, live shooting, but offer remote shooting as a side job or a side thing for uh, people that are still interested. Because I think lots of people are still interested and will keep being interested in yeah. the future. And obviously, so, you can offer, uh, yeah. yeah, you can offer different locations as well as you're traveling. So like if studio, yes, if, yeah, on the other hand, then I would. I would have to travel with the equipment of someone else, and that's not yeah. all not not so easy to organize. Yeah. I don't have my own uh, setup. Yeah. Or, or you can find so, studios that could do it. So yeah, yeah that's possibility. Option, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But a studio, of course, is studio all over the world. It's the yeah, same yeah, thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could literally stay in Belgium and do that, and then it, it yeah. won't cost you anything. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, and get some new backdrops, that's and then it. you have a new studio. Yeah. So. Thanks, Sarah, for doing the podcast. Um, where can people find you on the internet, like your website, your social media, etc.? Yeah, so um, my website is uh, sarahscarlett.com. Uh, Instagram, Sarah Scarlet Model. Facebook, Sarah Scarlet Model. Um, but I think most of the things are on my website. So if you go to my website, sure. you can see all the all the social media channels. Thanks for doing the podcast, and I look forward to seeing some more work, both remotely and in person, from you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you soon. And you. Thank you very much. Bye. Hello, um, oh, I am oh, Sarah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Oh, no, I have to do the introduction. Okay, oh, that's, you have to do yeah, it. Yeah, that, that, that's, that, that's going to be an outtake already. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for doing the podcast. If, uh, if people don't know who you are, can you give them a brief in? See, now I've cocked up because now I, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about it. Oh, like, okay, let, let's, try this, let's try this again. Okay. When you're trying to say you're doing remote shoots, has you, have you found those groups 
been um oh god come on john say it for <laughs> here we go and uh, i was nervous about me